This is our library, TV room. These are shots I took. I think this is my favourite. I think the woman was thinking, what the hell is he taking a photograph? Looks at the thing, I click the shutter. So it's like she's looking at the naked body. Oh, that's really <laughs> funny. <laughs> and then this, this is uh, like underneath the... Uh... Yeah, that was a guy was up on the braid bub and he was throwing a stick for his dog and I've got a couple of frames and I just got this one where the dog's looking at me. I thought it was really cool. So I watch your film and I think um, I, I kind of um, a great admiration, but also a bit of envy, I suppose, in a way, because I started off quite a bit in documentaries, but I never did anything quite so um, profoundly good as that. <laughs> There's an imaginary line out there between right and wrong, good and evil. I believe what I am doing is good and what I'm standing up against is evil. I, I mean, Cartel Land was beautifully shot. I mean, it, it's, it seems more rare these days that documentaries are actually that well shot, frankly. <laughs> that, it, that it wasn't a traditional kind of chasing around camera, you know. It just seemed so considered. You know, sometimes it was almost like you didn't feel you were watching a documentary. In Cartel Land, you know, it was, it was, I tried at least to try to make the film feel um, somewhat cinematic and, 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 yeah. and, and real. Yeah. I mean, yeah. mainly real. Yeah. My goal at every step along the way was to remove myself yeah you know yeah, and, and yeah. I always just hid behind the camera you know the camera was me I really wanted you as an audience member to go on this journey I mean I think your film in a way it poses the same kind of dilemma and issues that Sicario does in a sense you know it's some th some of these things you can't understand and the question is yeah what do you do The State Department is pulling an agent that specializes in responding to escalated cartel activity. It's a different way of telling a similar story, isn't it? In Sakara, you still kind of, in a way, getting across a similar message, but it's a contrast to your film, yeah. I wish I could only work on films that have that kind of content, you know. And very lucky, you know, something like Sicario, and it's it's had you know some relationship to the real world, not just being, you know, candy fluff. <laughs> Obviously, I've like worshipped you since I was a, you know, got into this business, and you know, you're a legend. And I think like 29 of my favorite 30 films you shot, like it's like it's unbelievable. I mean, so many of your films have this almost like a documentary feel, especially in Sicario. Do you, do you try to achieve that? I mean, I used to do documentaries for television and. When people ask me, how do you learn to be a cinematographer, I think that's probably the best way you can. You know, even on a feature film, you're reacting to something that's in front of you, really. So shooting documentaries, you learn at speed. Watching Sicario, I almost had you know, like flashbacks of you yeah. know, the way you, the camera's bound, you know, moving in, in the back of the, the trucks. Is that one of ours? Squatter vehicle, left lane. In Cartel Land, I spent way too many hours bouncing in the back of trucks and the way you shot it just felt so real. Sicario was a very realistic film. We had to go to Mexico, we couldn't see any other way doing it. I mean, the scene was crucial to the way this world was being reviewed to the audience that was going to watch the film, so 
We'd had an SUV that we took the tires down so it was slightly more stable. And we wanted the, you know, between shots that are always kind of moving with the convoy and being inside with Emily and seeing things from inside from her point of view. As though we were there with a handheld camera, but you, physically we couldn't do that. In Cartel and you know, the scene in the, in the third act of the film, when the car and it gets shot at and then it leads to the witch hunt through town and they grab the, the father away from the crying daughter and he's being interrogated at gunpoint. No me voltees a ver con quien trabajas. Nomás dime con quien trabajas. No policía. I mean, to be in the car with him and to be literally, like, I'm, you know, I'm shooting right here and, you know, the gun's right on your head. But the fact you can sit in the back of that car and you can shoot so much and wait for the moment that you want to use. You know, when I was shooting documentaries, it was 10 minutes. That was it. And after 10 minutes, you take the mag off, change the roll of film over, tape it over, tape it. So that's, I could do it pretty quickly, but you would lose that two minutes of time that stuff might have happened in. See, I couldn't even, I couldn't even imagine shooting on film now. I mean, we shot 500 plus hours, had 100, I don't know, 120. <laughs> So what was your ratio, your footage ratio? Or you don't well, even I mean, think uh, like that. 500 plus hours to 90 minutes, so, wow, yeah. you know, whatever that is. I'm not cool, good at math, yeah. but <laughs> it, it really is amazing. I'm so yeah. jealous. <laughs> it's where technology really does make an effect on the sort of film you can make and the style of filmmaking you can do. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Get out of the car. Going back to... Sicario, I mean, the, the shootout itself, that was... It's a set built on a parking lot in Albuquerque, you know, right. with a basically building a set and CG extensions. You know, you're not doing what you do. It's not a real situation. You know, you can't just go across the real bridge and shoot. I mean, you kind of go there wishing, oh, I kind of wish there was something happening real and I could just be there, you know. But you can't, you know. But on the other hand, you can't do it twice, and we can. <laughs> When I shot documentaries, I loved the fact that it was an exploration and there was such a challenge for the film to find itself in a way. And that's obviously the biggest difference is that you have this yeah. script that you're trying to visualize and make beautiful and haunting. And yeah. for me, especially with Cartel Land, is, you know, I have absolutely no yeah. idea where it's ending. Yeah. I was always interested about this, this, this surface between the filmmaker and the subject. ¿Qué harías tú? Esperar que vinieran por ti o comprar una cosa de estas y defenderte. ¿Qué harías tú? How did you come to be filming the doctor in, in Mexico? Yo soy Manuel Mireles, uno de los coordinadores generales de las autodefensas de Michoacán. Venimos a brindarles el apoyo que algunas de las familias nos han estado pidiendo por las cosas que han estado pasando. For me, an audience member watching the film, I'm thinking, yeah, no, this is a good guy, or at least his motives are completely above board. And then to sort of have that whole, have him exposed at the end of the movie, I thought that was kind of amazing. Even from the beginning, he had this sort of complexity to him that, that, that fascinated me. Did you know the film was gonna go that way? No. No, 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 no. yeah, yeah, no. it's interesting. Yeah. yeah, I had no idea where the story was gonna go or where his character was gonna go. The sort of unveiling of his character, as it as it as it's shown in the film, is really how it's unveiled to me as well. Would you have been disappointed if he'd ended up being a true saint? <laughs> no, you know, I think to me that's what makes him human, you know, and I yeah. think that's what makes hopefully the film somewhat interesting is that it's you know I think a lot of documentaries put people and and subjects in nice neat little boxes mm -hmm. and and you know I really didn't want to do that I, I really wanted to sort of revel in the complexity of humanity yeah there's there's definitely wrong like Alejandro in Alejandro in in, in Sicario is definitely you know my favorite or most interesting character because in a way, yes, morally what he does is wrong, but you can understand in some way who he's become and who he is and the mixture of emotions. And that's, I love that about film, when it, things shouldn't be clear cut. I mean, too much, too much of Hollywood filmmaking is clear cut. A nice story, you come out at the end and it's all sort of tied up in a 
pink ribbon and everybody's very happy, you know, it's just kind of boring. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's what's so great about it is it makes you, I think to that, that ambiguity, the, the messiness with which yeah. we're fighting this yeah. war, the messiness yeah. of that character, the, yeah. the means that he has to take to achieve yeah. what he wants, you know, while disturbing and, and uncomfortable and perhaps, you know, wrong to some degree, yeah. um, is understandable. It's interesting, isn't it? Watching Sicario, the land was a character. Yeah. The landscape yeah. was a character. Yeah. And it became more so when we, when we got to New Mexico and started shooting because we realized we were getting this kind of active monsoon season. And so we got these amazing skies and stuff. So, you know, we kind of embraced that really. And, and, and when the um, soldier takes Kate up onto the roof say and, that, that, I mean, that and is... you see the warriors and the yeah. tracers and you got this unbelievable sky. And how many people have told me that's CG? And you go, oh, no, it wasn't, it was real, but people think it's CG these days, you know. But yeah, it, that, that is just luck. So I was really struck watching Cartella and how much you've done something similar, didn't you? You know, you basically, the landscape was a character, but also you use those shots to kind of build tension within the structure of your film, which is something you don't, you don't often see documentaries do successfully, frankly, you know. Because it was not just a, device to set right. the character of the place. It was also a, a pacing device. Right, um, right. The, the landscape or the establishing shot is, can be kind of undervalued, really. And, and it, it's too often it's not integrated to the, the whole narrative. You know what I mean? Going down to Mexico for the premiere was, was a really emotional experience, showing it you know, in front of a Mexican audience for the first time you know, in a very emotional Q&A uh, in which, you know, someone in the audience that stood up and said, you know, who do you think you are telling our story? How can you tell this story honestly if you're not from here? Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, that, that was the essence of the question. To me, it's all about how you relate to human beings, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and how you yeah. hopefully try to get at, you know, whatever that truth is. What would yeah. I do if my yeah. My sister is hanging from the bridge, like you see in Sicario. Yeah, 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 exactly. Or my, or my brother, yeah. you know, was was beheaded. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, these yeah. are things that constantly right. were percolating through my right. head. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't, I can't fix the drug war. Mm. You know, I can't fix what the Knights nice Templar cartel is doing in Mitchell Khan. I can't change that situation. But hopefully, by by shedding light on it, I can, you know, show people this world that they don't get to see. And maybe as an outsider, sometimes you can see a situation, if not more clearly, you can see it from another side, maybe. Similar to that question that I received in the Q&A, like, do, did you ever think about, you know, someone asked you that, if someone asked, like, who, Roger, who do you think you are telling the story of, of the drug war as a, you well, know, I, a, a I white could, guy? I could, guy I could deny all responsibility, because I was just a cinematographer, Denny. but, you know, I wouldn't have done the film if I felt the script had been fictional or um, voyeuristic, uh, you know, um, celebrating the violence or using it in a, in a sort of way to just um, make an action movie or something like that. And it's that whole balance between doing something that is, you know, uncompromising and totally reality based or, or making a once upon a time story, You're still kind of in a way getting across a similar message. <laughs> You think about going back there and following up? With Cartel and it would be fascinating. It would to be interesting, in, in it? yeah. Three or four years. I Might mean, be I really think, depressing. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I think the only reason not to is, is the perhaps inevitable fact that the story could be exactly the same. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Probably going to be people with different shirts on, different hats, you know, with a different name, but mm -hmm. it's probably going to be the same thing. Mm -hmm. I sometimes daydream about going back to documentaries. But really? I think, yeah, I do. I, I, there's a lot about it I miss. I miss the connection. You know, I, I miss that kind of learning experience of going in situations and, you know, getting to understand the way other people live, basically. It's a fantastic opportunity. Any understanding I have about the world is through what I did in documentaries, you know. Well, I, I forgot to tell you, but this whole thing has been a conspiracy to get you to, to come back <laughs> to, to come documentary back. film. Uh, and that's, that's the, yeah, well, that's Haskell the, main, was the doing main objective. It. Haskell was still shooting documentaries in his 90s, wasn't he? So, you know, maybe he will. <laughs>
Maybe it's not so crazy. <laughs>